Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people truly believe they can have what they want, when they want. And in this episode, OP deals with an entitled roommate who decides to stop paying rent, and it only gets worse from there. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your stories to this email right here. Let's dive in. So, I don't know what's gotten into my wife. When we met, I was still married to my ex-wife. Now, I'm not proud of it, but my wife started at our job and we slept together after a party. This was about six years ago. My ex-wife found out when she saw nudes on my phone. It broke her and ended our marriage. Everything was fine, and my children gradually forgave me, and much of it was thanks to my ex, who insisted that I was still their father and that I loved my children. They never liked my wife, however, because they overheard her talking badly, saying how fat and old their mother was and how she was no competition. Now my ex is happily engaged to a man who's very well off, like a rich, rich millionaire. Upon finding out, my wife has been depressed ever since she heard that, making comments about what he sees in her and how it's not gonna last. My wife has also googled everything about him, his net worth, his property, his social media accounts, and she doesn't stop talking about him and his money. I got very wary, and this last week, she's been extra depressed and angry. She's not sleeping, and she cried several times. When she was finally taking a nap, I took her phone and saw that she sent my ex's fiancé some flirtatious texts via Instagram, and even one nude picture of herself. He only answered the first DMs when she introduced herself, congratulated him about the engagement, and told him that they were basically a family soon. When she was getting more flirtatious, he stopped answering and her DMs were left on scene. This was last week. So I called my ex-wife and she confirmed that her fiancé has been receiving these texts and they were embarrassed and unsure of what to do, so they just ignored her. I confronted my wife about this and she became very angry, saying that I've embarrassed her by talking to my ex. She was crying, she admitted that she did send these, but it was just because she felt that my ex was a bitch, that she did not deserve a fiancé like that with lots of money. She also says it's not fair that my ex-wife would now be living in a 19th century penthouse, married to a rich man. She also told me that I was the one who's driven her to this, since she's never felt like she's won me completely. That I married her after my divorce was a fact, and I made her insecure. Now I don't understand, I always thought we were happy, that she was happy. She always told me how she loved me, and I feel guilty that I've made her miserable and drove her to be this insecure. But at the same time, I'm very pissed, so what should I do? So basically, OP's wife became jealous that she chose the wrong man and has serious regrets at this point. In my opinion, OP needs to re-examine this relationship because clearly his wife isn't happy with him. Like, I don't know how much money OP has, but it sounds to me like she wants a rich, rich guy for herself. Like, sending another guy pictures of herself and these flirtatious messages in hopes of what? That this millionaire is gonna see that she's better looking than the woman he's about to marry and leave his fiancé for her? Like, I'm pretty sure if this went on anymore, it would get to the point where the wife would be like, but I deserve a rich millionaire. How dare that ugly old hag get one and not me? <laughs> This person says, I love a good karma story. The new wife is miserable and she embarrassed herself. OP cheats and he gets cheated on. Ex-wife gets an honest fiancé that shows her the text and gets a penthouse. Chef's kiss. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. So I share a two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment with someone who gets triggered by the most minor things. She thrives on conflict. I do my best to not cause conflict, but that's nearly impossible with this 38-year-old woman who works from home. For example, she doesn't want me to be around some of the common areas, such as the small outdoor patio because she's told me her stuff is there. She's got a lot of stuff, by the way. She has so much stuff that she feels the need to put some of it in the living room and on the patio. She's also told me that she's a germaphobe. She doesn't want me to touch anything, such as the light switches, doorknobs, fridge handle, kitchen sink handle, and if I do, I need to wipe it down because she thinks my hands are gross and sweaty. Again, I'm not allowed to touch things in my home. 
Now I did decide to tolerate it as long as she was paying rent. I'll let her seize those areas and avoid touching a few things. But my patience started to run out when she became a deadbeat. Out of nowhere, she texted me that she would pay me rent on the week of June 19th. She needed to pay me on June 1st, but I made the mistake of trusting her. Every time I tried to text her about rent, she was vague about it. And that got me a bit frustrated, not only at myself, but her too. I then submitted paperwork to get her evicted. Today, I decided to lay in front of the sliding glass patio doors to get some sunlight. When roommate Karen arrived and saw me sitting near her stuff, she freaked out. She rudely called me out and told me not to sit anywhere near her stuff. That's when I asked her when she'll pay me back. She ignored me and she walked into her room. Then, 15 to 20 minutes later, she walks out while talking on the phone. I asked her again and she ignored me. She then walked around me to go outside to the patio and close the sliding door behind her. I just chilled next to her stuff in front of the sliding door. That's when I decided that as soon as she left the patio, I'll protest by going out to the patio. When she came out of the patio, I went out and closed the sliding door behind me. After about 20 minutes on the patio, I was dumbfounded that she hadn't tried to argue with me yet. That's when I caught a glimpse of her on the phone on the other side of the glass patio doors. She's glancing at me and I hear her say, yeah, he's sitting on the floor watching videos on his phone. Now I didn't think much of it, she was probably telling her friend how triggered she was, which is the reaction I wanted. But no, 10 minutes later, a female cop opens the sliding door. I later found out that she called the cops for my behavior and she was telling them what I did and how horrible of a roommate I was, always pestering her for money. I was baffled because I knew I didn't break any laws. I did not harass, raise my voice, throw insults, show violent aggression, touch, or threaten my roommate. The cop asked me what was going on, and I nervously explained that my roommate and I had some conflict on rent. And I added that my roommate gets mad whenever I chill on the patio that she acts like it's illegal for me to do anything in my own home. That's when the cop first told my roommate that she can take a walk if she's triggered by me sitting on the patio. Second, she asked me if I was going through the legal process of kicking her out. I said yes, and showed her the emails, and she told me to sit tight, and then walked back inside to chat with my roommate. I heard my roommate talking loudly, almost screaming. I couldn't make out what she was saying, but I was worried. Worst case, she could lie, and the cops would take her side. The best case, she's trying to convince them that I'm the worst roommate ever. So after 10 minutes, the same cop returned and told me my roommate was just rambling about stuff. I just nodded because it didn't surprise me. She went back inside. The cops basically sided with me. The cop bluntly told her that she was at fault for not paying rent, and it was okay for me to ask her about it. The cops were displeased at her for calling them when she could have communicated with me about the unpaid rent. The cops told me that they couldn't do anything and that this was a civil manner. We were told to avoid and not talk to each other, and that's when they left. My roommate went to get her blood pressure checked by a paramedic. She later returns to her room to lament. F you, Karen, I'll be sitting in the common area next to your stuff. Update. I'm still a little shaken at what happened last night. It all started when I sent my roommate, Remy, a short demand letter through text around 9 p.m. I just informed her that if she's late on rent by the 4th of July, I'll go through a small case court. I was told to do this by the local legal aid if I suspected my roommate would not pay rent. After I sent that, my roommate came knocking on my bedroom door. I went out and I saw an enraged person. She told me that I shouldn't go to court because she might be able to pay me by the 10th. My roommate did most of the talking. I don't remember everything she said, but essentially, she was trying to make a case that it won't look good to the people she knew if I went to court. She also points out how good of a roommate she's been to me and how I've been a lousy roommate to her. My roommate also didn't want other people to get involved. I reassured her that nothing would affect her as long as rent is paid before we go to court. But the more I resisted her request to not go to court, the more unhinged she became. She said I was the reason she couldn't make money, that I should just pay her portion since I'm working. And apparently I'm destroying her focus by asking her for rent. So after an hour or two of her yelling and insulting me, she mentions how her peers saw my behavior as harmful and toxic. I told her that my peers saw her harmful as well, and that's when she exploded with rage when she heard that. 
she starts telling me that I don't have the right to harm her reputation when they don't know the full story. She then got close to my face and her eyes opened wide. She insisted that I not spread any things about her. I held my ground. I expressed that if she can talk to her people about me, then I have the right to say truthful things about her from my point of view. And that's when she threw a right hook punch, hitting me on the left side of my jaw. While trying to gather myself and figure out the proper recourse, she grabs me by my shirt and told me that she would do the worst things to me if she were a man. She was unhinged. After she punched me, she told me she doesn't hit people, but it was my fault for getting punched. I wanted to escape the situation, but I couldn't. The only thing I could do was de-escalate. I told her that she needed to back off. She repeated that I had to stop talking crap about her. I said okay, and she backed off. She then puts her right hand out and she demand I shake it. I complied. And that's when she said, I want you to repeat after me while we shake. I will never say anything about Remy to anyone ever again. It was something along those lines. I reluctantly obliged, but I messed up a few times. She wanted me to keep saying it and to repeat after her until I told it exactly how she said it. As much as I wanted to resist, I didn't want to escalate the situation. I don't know what would have happened if I fled. She might have a gun, she could damage the apartment, I don't know. After she was satisfied with our shake, she calmed down a bit. I tried to leave the situation by signaling it was late, but she wanted to keep talking to me. Her behavior did a complete 180. She was friendly. I didn't feel safe to leave until she felt that I wasn't going to call 911. Remy said she wanted to keep being roommates and even suggested that we get a house together. She said that I needed her. Eventually after she gave me a high five and a hug, we decided that we talked enough and I went to my room and she went to hers. It was 1.25 in the morning. I wanted to call the cops but I didn't want my roommate to hear me and I don't want to be at the apartment when the cops arrive. That's when I heard the patio door open and close. My roommate went outside and I took that opportunity to leave the apartment. Shaken, I called 911. I told the operators what happened and waited for the cop out front of the apartment where the gate was, far away from my unit. It took like 10 to 15 minutes for them to arrive. I explained what happened. The cops then asked why I didn't call 911 right away when I got hit. I said I didn't feel safe to leave. They told me waiting an hour before calling 911 is not the right protocol, and they gave me a few options. They said that I could file a charge against my roommate, but they would have to talk to my roommate to get her side of the story. Nothing could happen if she told a different story, but it could escalate things. They said even if my roommate admitted to hitting me, she would likely be in jail for a day or two, adding that she might retaliate when she returns to the apartment. The other option is file a restraining order. The cops told me that I could get my roommate out of the apartment if I did this. I picked the restraining order option. The cop gave me a paper that explained how to file a restraining order, and I was told to file it on Monday. The cops then left, and I went back to the apartment. Right now, I'm patiently waiting for Monday with a sore jaw. I wish I had recorded the conversation of what happened last night because she said a lot of crazy things during this three-hour interaction. I can't remember all of it. So yeah, that's where the post ends, guys, but it sounds to me like OP's room is not only a Karen, but a sociopath as well. And I'm not gonna lie, I would be terrified too if I lived with an unhinged person like that. Like punching a person out of anger one minute, and then the next being all friendly and hugging it out, and then has the nerve to say that OP deserved it. Like yeah, I'd be getting locks on my bedroom door while looking for a new place, guys, because once she finds out that OP got a restraining order against her, Oh boy, I don't think that's gonna go well at all. I would not continue living there because you never let crazy know where you live. So I had a doozy of a customer a few days ago and I'm still shaking my head about it. For some background, I work in an apparel department of my store, mainly on the register. I was on the register a few nights ago when this story took place. Customers had actually been pretty good that night, but not this woman. Oh no, not her. It was probably like 9.30 when this middle-aged Karen comes up to my counter to buy some items. She had a few shirts from the men's department as well as some workout pants and a few small bottles of wine. I start ringing things up and she has a coupon for buy one, get one free for shirts. So I scan everything, total it, then apply the coupon. I tell her the total and she just stares at the screen in a way that only true pain in the ass customers can. Now I knew she was going to have a problem the moment she opened her mouth. 
But what came out actually surprised me because she was so bold. The Karen says, so that's not enough of a discount after the coupon. I want more. Now I wasn't really sure what she could mean. I was really confused. And I said, um, well, everything rang up at the price it's supposed to. I really don't know what you mean by not enough of a discount. The Karen says, yeah, but it's still not enough. I thought this would work on the pants as well. The coupon in question clearly states young men and men shirts. There's nothing on the coupon anywhere saying anything about pants, so why she thought that beats me. I say to her, oh, I see, the coupon's only applicable to men's shirts. There's not a coupon for pants this week. Hearing me say that, she kind of narrows her eyes at me, but she didn't say anything else. So I figured that was it. So I repeat her total again, and very politely, I may add. She ignored me and asked where the jewelry was. The woman says to me, well, do you have any like costume, jewelry, or stuff like that? I told her yes we did, and gave her directions to where they were, assuming she would go look once the transaction was completed, but I was totally wrong. Without another word to me, she books it in the direction I'd explained to her, and she leaves me with an unfinished transaction. I was getting sick of her weird, wishy-washy attitude. Add to that fact that I had customers who had just lined up after she walked away, and I was downright pissed off. I explained to the other customers what happened, and told them that they could check out in the front, at the main check stands, if they would like. But they didn't mind, thankfully. So I waited and waited, probably 5 minutes. When the woman came back all of a sudden, holding two little wallet clutches that were sparkly. The Karen says to me, I found these, add them to my total. I say to her, sure thing, so I added them to her transaction, put them in a bag with the rest of her items, and told her her new total. She then stares at the screen again, this time really scrutinizing it, and I could feel my soul leaving my body with how annoyed I was. The Karen says, no, that's not cheap enough. Those jewelry bag things are supposed to be half off. Now I knew how this was gonna go, right then and there, and I wasn't having it. I felt bad for the other customers in line, but there was no way I was gonna let this woman get away with me adjusting the price of something that I knew full well wasn't on sale. So I say to her, ma'am, the jewelry actually is regular price right now, it's not on sale, I'm sorry. She then says, um, so what was that sign over there then? It said 50% off all jewelry. The answer lied within her question, the sign said all holiday jewelry, which is not what she had. She may have been using it for that purpose, but it wasn't actually holiday jewelry. I explained that to her, this time a little less friendly than I'd been. The woman in line behind her, who had stayed through her taking her sweet time shopping, finally gave up and walked away. So it was down to us again. The Karen says to me, well that's false advertising. Now if I ever hear those words uttered again in my life, it'll be too soon. There are so many damn customers who think that something is false advertising because they're too ignorant to realize that what they're getting isn't included in a sale. I couldn't stop myself again, so I say, can you explain to me how exactly it's false advertising when the sign back there is only on top of the holiday jewelry, when these clutches you got were nowhere near there? as well as full price, I don't understand. The woman just rolls her eyes at me, but she didn't say anything in response. I then asked if she would still like them, and I think out of spite, she took them. I then repeat her total for what felt like the 8th time. I mean, at this point, I had spent almost 20 minutes with her at the register, and I had other things I needed to do in my department. She then looked at the damn screen again, scrutinizing it. Now I knew she was looking for anything else that had an imaginary discount that she had conjured out of her ass, and she happened to find one with the men's workout pants. She says to me, uh, yeah, so those pants were supposed to be 50% off. It was like she had to get something discounted. There was no way she was going to leave without getting something for cheaper than our already insane sale prices. Also, our men's workout pants, especially the brand she had, were definitely not 50% off. And I know this because I had set the ad for men's athletic wear that week. So I say to her, ma'am, I'm sorry to inform you, but no, they're not. I set the ad myself, so I definitely remember that. The woman just sighed heavily, definitely annoyed, but at least she didn't fight it. I waited for her to scrutinize the screen even more, but alas, she finally pulled money out of her monstrosity of a purse and I almost cried from joy. 
Right as she was about to hand me the money for the purchase, she did something so unthinkable that I'm still unable to fully process it. She looks at the screen one last time, looks at me, then looked at the bag merchandise, and then put her money back in her wallet and said, You know what? I really don't want this stuff anymore. You've argued with me over every price I've told you, and I can't believe you treat a customer like this. It's just made it so I don't want to give you my money. You've lost a customer today. At that I say, I'm so sorry you feel that way. However, this is a business, and I can't just take your word for every price you think something should be. Especially when I set the sale ads myself. If you think something should be cheaper, maybe customer service would be the better way to go. I hope you have a good night. The woman says, But I'm just saying, if a customer tells you something's cheaper, you honor it. The customer's always right. Now at this point, I did something very unprofessional here, and I'm gonna be honest, but I shouldn't have said what I said. But I had been sick all week, and I was very angry, and just wasn't having it. I tell her, let me stop you there. I will never take a customer's word for it, or honor a price blindly. Expecting me to do that, especially with such a large adjustment, is ridiculous. You've had an issue with everything I've rang up for you because you didn't read the sale signs accurately, and that's not my fault. I won't adjust prices for you because you choose to ignore and pick and choose what you want. Have a good night. I stayed at my register as she walked away, and honestly, I expected her to go straight to customer service, but she just walked out the door. She muttered quite a few rude remarks, but I didn't care, I was too pissed off. And yes, I shouldn't have said what I said, but I'm sorry, this is a business. I don't care that you think I should honor random prices that you pull out of your ass because you want stuff to be cheaper. If you want cheaper prices, you know where to shop, and it's not at my high-end store. People have been getting very shady lately with prices and haggling, so I'm not doing it. I think I could have handled the situation better, but honestly, what else was there to do? I had to stick to my guns, and I'm glad I did. If I get talked to by a manager, I'll just explain what happened, and I know they'll have my back. I'd rather lose a sale from a thief who would only be paying half the price than an honest customer who actually reads the sales and pays attention, and who doesn't try to swindle my store. Honestly, OP was right to say what they did to that Karen, because sometimes people have to get called out for their ridiculous shenanigans they tried to pull. Next time, cancel the sale, move on, and if she wants to escalate it, call a manager. She was being super unreasonable. And boy was that woman ever bold. Um, this needs to be 50% off. That discount is not enough. I don't like the price it's showing, but hey, that's entitlement for you guys. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash I don't work here episode. Where a guy decides to attack OP for not serving him, and he learns a painful lesson he will never forget. Go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.